Blinka, blinka, blinka. So, um, we have a newsletter that's pretty awesome. And uh, it is awesome. Yeah, it they is. send links to it all the time. Yeah. And each week we go over some of the cool things in it. Please subscribe and would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Everyone would appreciate it. We spent a lot and of time. It's really good stuff. And it has just about everything that you can imagine that has anything to do with Python and anything to do with electronics. Um, from GIF playing with Circuit Python to a lot of this neat uh auto-generated code with like chat gpt and uh, pong there's just a lot of new stuff that that's in there this week however um the thing that we're going to talk about this week is this is the special guide that you wanted to um have made from the team which is all about circuit python safe mode yes so this was interesting to me because when we were doing a lot of um testing with Betabox cricket I was breaking it constantly because yeah. it was like, this was new. This yeah. was like, oh my God, like we're doing Python and robotics and all that. And we had to do a bunch of stuff um, that kind of like, I would like, oh, let me take it. Let me, let me remove the following like frozen um, libraries or like whatever it was. I'm just like, I need to like, basically like an old school Mac. Yeah. How do I make it so it's, it's like hold shift down while you up? How do, yeah. How do I, how, like, I'm like, how do I do safe mode? And, I, and you know, it's, it's been a while, um, but now it's kind of like, possible so you can you can mess around and then you can boot into a safe mode if you're yes if, well we've always get in some trouble we've always had the safe mode available and, and sometimes you can you know dub, double or triple click reset to get into it um safe mode is basically if you had like a hard fault or um you had an uncaught exception or um I'm trying to think is it like a low battery like a brownout we have a couple different reasons why you might end up going into safe mode and um if you're a beginner, it's really nice that safe mode kicks you out and like kind of stops running stuff so you can see what happened, like you can see the, the the exception trace. However, if you are not a beginner, you might want to do something special on safe mode. Like for example, um, if there's a brownout, maybe you want to like um, stop, check the battery, you know, save the data to a file. Um, or if you're doing an IoT thing, maybe you want to send, you know, what's called the last will over mqtt and say hey i'm about to go offline for a very long it's time like a dead man switch it's a little bit of a dead man switch it's like it's like it's outside the scope of the, of the code.py like you might want to do certain activities um and this is something i would have found really handy while doing like mag tag i would always end up in safe mode and it was like you know shoot like i didn't want um, to actually i wanted to just go to sleep and restart i didn't want to actually you know, there was times when um when covid was peaking in new york city and we wanted to look at the infection right and then the, the the data source or something would happen and we'd wake up in the morning and the the, the display would it would hit an yeah. error because like the database was down or something. when you can do like a finally but it's well yeah. basically like we didn't have this this structure built in but now we do so um dan halbert who's a core developer i uh, wrote a guide which it what you can do is you have a a, a circuit if, if you have a file called safe mode.py that will run when in safe mode and what it can do is exit safe mode or it can again write errors to a file or somehow track what happened um so be good for telemetry um analysis etc it's a kind of a more advanced uh feature but um you know if you're not used to safe mode like a lot of microcontrollers if you you know write, try to read or write address zero in memory it'll hard fault and it'll just like the watchdog timer will kick okay. in and it'll, it'll reboot you i like the descriptive messages it's like you're in safe mode because yes this is also nice it's it's updated the Target. description make sure you're so. providing enough power press reset to exit safe mode that's really neat yes but you have to click reset so that's yeah. the problem is if you weren't there to click reset it doesn't automatically reset whereas if you're you know if you have a brownout you might want to do something with that information anyways it's um it's in the new guide on learn check it out okay um so in addition to the magtag one that you were talking about um could you have this safe mode interact with something like adafruit io could you have it like yes you could like if if you know if you have something you know you have something on a boat and and this error occurs um and it's a rare occurrence you might want to log when that happens you know I'm, this is i'm i'm speculating because i've yeah. actually written this but what you could do is have safe mode write something to the non-volatile memory and say hey i failed at you know this time and then 
boot into the main program, the main program sees like, oh shit, I just got out of a safe mode. And it sends a message to A4DIO saying, hey, it's Sunday at 6 a.m. Yeah, you had a failure. that's why my data, that's why the data I'm sending. That, that could be why the data. This is getting really neat because, you know, a lot of people do uh, stuff with uh, those little micro satellites with mm -hmm. CircuitPython. I just like the idea of like this, this like very smart thing that can operate on its own and do yeah, things and, it, and give you a, a, a error message later. And it knows why, yeah. which is, you know, if you're used to like, I actually really like using this in Arduino. It's you can look at the reset flags and see like, why did my microcontroller reset? And and you can, you know, even if you don't have a full debugger, it can give you some idea of like what occurred. Um, so it's a, again, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's something that I've been looking uh, for. And I yeah. think it's, I think it's, especially for IoT stuff, it's very handy because I to be honest, like the ESP series could sometimes kind of just like go off into the woods yeah. and it, you know, it'll, it'll hard fault. And you're like, I don't know why. And it's very hard for us to debug, but at least your project is. Instead. I think this, this particular feature thing and um, how we do things like you can have circuit Python, not show up as a drive. If you want to do something with keyboards, these are like very interesting advanced features that really make it a well-rounded choice. Yeah. Um, you know, we just did this floppy project. And um, you know, and did an amazing job, and like Jepler, and then Mark did it. Like everyone worked together on this, and like these gifts are cool and everything. And you know, it's it's not a project that I would um, say you could do with anything else. And I kind of wanted to be like, hey, it, I, like not offer a bounty, but like, hey, is there any other way to do this, any easier way with lower cost hardware, and not like, you know, just find an, like you could find something else that works with Adafruit stuff if you want like that's fine but I'm saying like no like this would be completely written in something else like is it even possible and it's like kind of no it's really hard to do all this stuff yeah but, this is very advanced yeah anyways um so but we make it easy yeah so good work okay um don't forget sign up Adafruit daily in your mailbox we do not spam you we do not harvest your emails we don't do anything like that